Two weeks ago, my eight-year-old son suddenly asked me, what is apartheid, mom? They had been discussing about Nelson Mandela. He tried to explain that some years ago in South Africa, some had the view that black people had not the same right and they could not be, for example, on the same buses or hospitals. I could see like his face is frowning a bit and really looking very puzzled. It made me realize things that existed just a few years back could look so strange and even impossible to understand. And later on that evening I was thinking, I wonder what are the things that exist today that in like 10 or 15 or 20 years ago we will look upon them and say, but how was it possible? How, how, how could we accept that or how could that exist? I will start from the basic to discuss what is diversity, what is inclusion. Inclusion might be a new concept to you. And I will explain to you why is it important to have both a diverse as well as an inclusive organization. What are the best business benefits that comes with such an organization. What is diversity? People with different kind of perspectives. For me, it's mankind. We're different. We should be different. Diversity for me in Skanska is that we have a company where we have people with different backgrounds, different genders, different ethnicity, different type of educational backgrounds, different ages. First is just to attract the right people. And once they are in the company, we have to make sure that they are really respected so they can work with their full potential. Diversity in itself does not result in fantastic performance, but if you couple it with inclusion, magic happens. For instance, if you have a team or an organization where there's a lot of diversity within the organization in terms of gender, ethnicity, age, background, preference, lifestyle, etc. But in combination with a culture that isn't at all mature or able to deal with these differences, you would have a situation where on paper, if you took like a snapshot picture, it would be good in terms of diversity. Wow, look at all this diversity, this is great. But looking at other indicators, you would see that this is not a nice place to be at. This is a place where people exclude each other. So, so there would be frustration, conflicts, people would leave. Uh, the prerequisite to be creative and innovative would be really low. And of course, the overall performance wouldn't be particularly good either. You know, my whole life I've been working with diversity and inclusion in some way. So it's really something that I think is really, really important to the society at large and to Skanska as a company. This is the means to become better at what we do really. So it's not something separate from that. It's really, this will help us become even more successful. Inclusion should be for everybody. It's not just for diverse candidates and minorities or women. It should be for every person in our company. Everybody should be welcome.
The other position would be that you have a team or a group or a company where people are really similar to one another, where you have people of the same gender, the same ethnicity, educational background, preference, lifestyle, etc. So it's a homogenous team. It's of course far easier to sit around a table and you quickly get yes, yes, yes. But that's not the right answer. What we would have there is not so good diversity statistics, but we would have high work satisfaction, we would have low in terms of employee turnover. We might have a strong employer brand, but quite narrow. And the overall performance could be good, but what this group is lacking is to be innovative and creative. The business case above anything for diversity in our business is to bring people together with the diverse thought, which will generate innovation, which will make us a better company. Times are changing. We need to understand our clients, and to understand them, we need to mirror them in terms of diversity. To be a leader in your industry, you really need to take the opportunity to, to be a leader of the change and create a culture where employees want to be. What we want to achieve is teams that are both diverse as well as inclusive. And often we, we forget about the inclusion part. We say that yes, there's a lot of benefits coming from diversity, but not necessarily so. It really depends on what kind of culture we have. If we have an inclusive culture, we would have high work satisfaction, healthy employee turnover, strong employer brand, the prerequisite to be creative and innovative, and also the capacity to change in line with changing business environment. In this framework, it has kind of an internal perspective because it really focuses on group performance. What we have in addition, of course, is also the fact that we most probably also reflect our clients and customers. If we are not on par with, with, with the world we live in, we will slowly become obsolete and extinct. Companies working with diversity is the winner long term. The opposite is not an option. And of course it's really also about who we want to be, who we are, what are our, our values. And you have them here. Care for life. Act ethically and transparently. Be better together. And commit to customers. We need to walk the talk and really live our values. I would say that if we would not work with diversity inclusion in Skanska, maybe five, ten years from now, we would look back and, and others would look at us and say, what's going on? How is it possible that they don't have a more diverse workforce? So I want to make sure that when we look back on ourselves a few years from now, that we could feel proud that we have made this journey and, and not only followed the trends, but rather taken the lead in, in changing uh, the face of construction in general, but also being a, a leader in society and making sure that we contribute to, to changing the world even there. <laughs>